from my own eyesight, I've seen you all over town. Since day one. Not day two. Since day one. And I just want to say it for myself and from the citizens of Selma and my family, thank you for coming to help us because God knows we need it. We're probably literally, as we say in the South, a stone's throw to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. It makes you wonder sometimes when you see the damage that still persists months and even years after these storms, it's like something is not connecting here. Selma, Alabama, iconic for its transformative role in the civil rights movement, this important landmark grapples with urgent but less visible challenges. Its increasing vulnerability to recent natural disasters and ongoing economic woes are realities tucked away, almost hidden behind its historical significance. Selma, to me, it seems like they just forgotten, and it's almost like it's still stuck in the past almost. 1965 was the year everything changed for Selma. When it happened, I panicked. Chew gas is awful. It makes you think you can't breathe. You know the cattle prod is. They used them to make them cows move. Dude took the cattle prod and took it in my butt, you know. <laughs> the experience was important to me the passing of the voters' right bill. That's the importance that came out of it. You know, I suffered the slack. It's my legacy. It's what I represent. It's what I believe. It's me. I am black history. Yet Selma is often eclipsed in the panorama of contemporary society and has faced a new challenge. A lot of people have left. It's a whole entire community that looked like it was just wiped off the map and they just disappeared. You hate to see a community like this in such disrepair, in such disarray. Recent years have seen a rash of severe storms and devastating tornadoes tear through the region. On St. Patrick's Day in 2021, a tornado outbreak left Selma in a state of devastation. Team Rubicon, a veteran-led humanitarian organization was quick to respond. As their volunteers known as Gray Shirts began their work, they quickly realized that the community's distress was more extensive than initially anticipated. You know, the, the destruction is obvious that happens here and, and the people that haven't gotten help. Um, it, it's, it's staggering to know that places like this exist. This is now the new tornado alley all through the southeast. And it it's it's done more damage here than it has in Oklahoma and all those areas up there. They get a lot of publicity, but we're getting hit time and time and time again. When you work that hard to get something, it really hurts your soul, you know, for it to be torn up and in bad condition and you don't have the means or the resources anymore to fix it. In February of 2022, Team Rubicon returned to Selma. This time, their mission was to extend their reach with their rebuild program, aiming to provide much needed assistance to those whose homes were impacted by previous tornadoes and storms. Yesterday I was coming home and I just happened to ride by and saw these cars and trucks on North Broad Street. So I stopped and I asked, oh, what are you all doing? And someone came and said, we are here to help Selma. And I said, help Selma? I said, wow. And to see you all come and work as volunteers because you have served our country. So you coming back trying to serve us. We are gonna go here and I am help. Yeah. We do have a lot of people here in Selma that didn't have insurance during the flood, didn't have insurance during the hurricane. And so now to come back and to help rebuild their homes is amazing. You all came to help me where I really need it in the time of a storm. You don't know how blessed I feel. And I don't think they were ready for the amount of love that we brought in these trailers and these trucks, you know, with these gray shirts. So. I think they're getting used to it now. 
Team Rubicon is the first that I have been affiliated with. It's just been a thrill to me just to be a part. You know, I came out last night and sat down and ate dinner with the guys, and we just laughed and joked, and even better, we're veterans. <laughs> so we're already brothers, because we're veterans. We've served together, maybe different places, maybe at different times, but hey, we protected our country and still protecting our country. Y'all are taking a woman house that was in bad ear repair. And as I was joking with one of the guys, I know she gonna cry, but I just hope she don't have a heart attack when she see this brand new home. Working at Miss Zelma's home, Miss Zelma from Selma, you know, uh, technically it's been, it's been challenging. Her place was basically sinking in. The floors was basically sinking in to the middle of the uh, of the home. And so we went in there and basically raised the whole floor. It's, it's a good experience for me, you know. It's kind of like my heaven, right? And I get to go out here and help people. It's definitely making an impact on this community. So we just, as an organization, we just have to keep on with, with that action. I definitely think this community uh, will definitely change for the better, and it could actually move past civil war, civil rights, and way into the future, which is what it needs. What you have to do is you have to inspire the community to take action and to get things going, you know, and that's why when you bring outside people and fresh blood in, you know, that's what kind of sparks that. I had my granddaughters and grandson here with me. I'm trying to get custody, full custody of my grandson to keep him out of trouble. All, all of the kids. Um, yeah, I'm completely in love with the family. She's just stoic and strong and the kids are helping. You know, um, they, they want this new life. I was a high school student in a, in a town like this and I understand some of the um, obstacles and challenges you're gonna face going out here into this world. Gene, man. I see him struggling like I did as a kid, a little knucklehead, running the streets. I was in all kinds of trouble when I was 15. So letting him know that that isn't the way that he needs to go, being that example with all of these gray shirts coming through, this is the opportunity now that we have to capitalize, to change this kid's life, to push him in a direction, you know, because it's easy to fall in. We signed it so you'll remember us when we, you know, go away, put this on so we can, uh, we can hook you up. And I'm hoping and trusting God that you will see that it's more to life than gang banging, hanging out. I don't ever want to hear you wheels and drugs. Anything you got a problem with, I'm not God, but I'm willing to listen. And I love you. Through 2022 and 2023, Team Rubicon rebuilt 12 homes using the solid IBHS fortified home standards, bringing safety and renewed hope upon grateful families. I did apply. I did call in and ask for help, which I needed it. And they came out and, and uh, reviewed my home, saw the damage, and they repaired it. They even made it better. All this is new rebuilt back here. Even the kitchen appliance, they redone the floors, the tile. They made me have closet. This is so neat. As you can see, they redid this, all of this. They put, uh, they painted it with the sheet rock. They painted this with it. Watching the evolution of this program has truly blown me away. Knowing that I've been a part of it is surreal. Yeah, I'm, I'm super proud. Doing this for the last four years, I've seen exactly what happens when we give it back. And it's, again, it's truly life-changing.
it's a spark, but you have to have someone to continue to light it and acknowledge that it's a spark. And maybe some of the veterans that's here maybe can kind of come aboard and continue to ignite the fire so the spark will stay. The spark is the strength, is the independence that the community has developed just dormant and it's waiting to come out. That spirit of that history, just waiting to come out. Selma got hit hard by today's severe storms, leaving incredible amounts of damage across the town. Yeah, specifically the one that raced through Selma and caused quite a bit of damage, in fact, significant damage. Details are still coming in right now, but a tornado appears to have ripped through the city of Selma. You never thought that a tornado would just come through and just take us out like this. And my heart is just really, really, really hurt. Well, we knew it was coming because I watched the news. But you know, you don't never know about a tornado how it's gonna hit. Top came off and it tore up all the houses in this community. Everybody lost just about everything they had. Very frightening. Sound just like a train. Felt like a train. And it actually destroyed our house. It, it picked it up and set it back down on the foundation while we were in the home. This was our beautiful neighborhood. And all of these places around here you see, I grew up around them and I helped build a lot of this stuff. Never thought that a tornado would just come through and just take us out like this. Team Rubicon quickly went into action and deployed 226 volunteers from all over the country for a 54-day operation to serve the Selma community. Debris removal and roof tarping helped many to return back to their homes, but for most, some homes weren't recoverable and needed to be demolished for families to start over. It, I would be lying if I didn't say that every single homeowner is extremely, obviously it's extremely emotional for them. Half the time they think they've come to terms with it, but they haven't. We've done a couple properties, one specifically on Martin Luther King, homeowner, I mean he, uh, from the first bucket into the house to the last bucket to the curb, he, I mean he was emotional the whole time, respectfully, and uh, he, you know, that was, that was a hard one. We're giving them that first step to recovery. We're taking something that's a painful memory and turning it into a fresh slate. And that's kind of what, what we tell ourselves to get through it, and we take a lot of pride in that. But uh, there, there is no way to prepare for some of these interactions that you have. But we're going to get through this, though, because Selma is strong. My dreams are for Selma to rebuild and people come together. In the face of disaster and adversity, the citizens of Selma find strength in their community. Jubilee serves as a moment to both reflect on the past and envision a brighter future, embodying the enduring resilience of Selma. You can see hope. That hope is there, you see it everywhere. You see the sparkle everywhere, man. It's just, it needs to be heard. It needs to be seen. It needs to be acknowledged. My heart's felt hope would be that Selma will become a city where unity will drive, where um, respect. And what I want to see in Selma is growth. I, I tell people, I don't want to see it like it used to be. I want to see a new Selma. Selma may have been through tough times, but know that Team Rubicon will always be part of this community and ready to serve. It takes all of us to come together. You truly love, truly love the place and you give it everything you got. And I, I definitely think they have it in them here, 100%. I hope that we're able to do much more I hope that we can come back and do some work. I think that it will help re-energize the community when they feel like they, they have hope. 
And so that's why Team Rubicon is here. We made a promise to respond to disasters in rural areas and places that's hard to get to and places that has just been forgotten. And Selma is one of those places. And we hope that when we rebuild this home, that's one less home we have to rebuild when the next storm comes. We're going to do everything we can to rebuild this community and make it whole again. It was a long time ago, in 1965, we all had to go protesting racial job. And we got tired, tired. We became soldiers of a nonviolent infantry, soldiers fighting for racial equality. We marched and demonstrated and we went to jail. Freedom songs we sing helped us to prevail because we got tired. You got it? <laughs> That's my song. <laughs>